Hey you guys, welcome back. A few weeks ago, a buddy of mine, James, over at James Team Design, tagged me in a video of his where he talked about some CAD and CAM softwares and talked about Candle and UGS and touched on open builds for a second. I figured I'd go into a little bit more detail about why I chose open builds and why I think it'd be great for just about everybody else out there as well. I'm gonna go ahead and click connect and it's going to link to my CNC controller real quick. That way we can get to all of the functionality of this software. So you can see here it connected and immediately read the Gerbil settings, which are right here in the serial console. So if we jump back over to the 3D viewer, we can click with the scroll wheel as well as zoom in with that same scroll wheel. And we have the X and Y coordinates down here with our origin point showing as well. So if I was to run this using a center origin point, it would show negative coordinates in these quadrants, which is quite useful in understanding where you need to zero your machine out onto your stock. So moving forward into some of the lesser used parts of open builds that make it such an excellent software. Now open builds has these wizards up here built in, and these are kind of usually missing from most of the other softwares. It has its own built in surfacing tool where when you type in all the parameters of your bit and your material, it generates a toolpath for the surfacing. I'll go ahead and do that real quick. So I'm gonna just leave everything the way it is on here from default from the last time I used it. And we get the surfacing toolpath here. Moving on to another tool that I love in here is the mobile jog widget. And by scanning this QR code or typing this web address into your browser of any mobile device or other PC that's on the same Wi-Fi network, you can use a jog widget that allows you to jog the machine around. I use this on my phone quite often because I have a four foot by four foot CNC and my computer kind of lives in the back corner of it. So it's not really user intuitive for me to unplug it and take it over to the front just to be able to jog it around. So being able to jog it using my cell phone is very convenient. And in here as well, we can set X, Y, and Z zeros using those buttons, similar to the ones that are over here on the main screen. The only thing the screen here is really missing are the built-in probe functions, but we'll get into those in just a minute. So the other wizard tools that are great that are in here are these calibration tools, which guide you step-by-step step with some pictures with the work bee. But the majority of these do also correlate over to other CNCs as well, where you could use a tool or a straight edge to mark your actual rails themselves, move it over, mark the second mark, and then take a measurement. And then once you enter that measurement value in here, it will automatically do this calculation for you to figure out the correct step per millimeter for your machine. And it will load that when you select this button right here, right into your machine. Now, since I left them both as the stock values, it's not actually going to change mine. But if you were to type in your actual values in there, it will change your Gerbil settings for you when you go through that wizard. Now, there are a few other functions in here that I rarely use, like these customizable shortcuts. You can flash your Gerbil to an updated version if one's available for you directly through this flashing tool. And this USB interface is for the open builds controller. So if you're not using their controller like this, then that function is not really useful to you. But if you are using it, it does walk you through the steps of how to install it and connect it properly. And this job log does retain all of the previous jobs you've run. So I had mentioned setting up probes and you would do that using this little target button here and you can set up custom X, Y, Z as well as Z touch plates. And if you want me to go into detail about how you set those up, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. If I get about five comments asking about setting up the probes, I'll go through that process. Now, another great function right up here in this row of buttons is this check size tool. And what this tool is going to do is it's going to frame out the overall size of your project using the spindle. So you'll be able to see if your board is the right size or if maybe you've done something wrong and your sizing is off or if your board is in the wrong location, you'll be able to see that. Now, oftentimes in other software that the probe functions are available, but they must be done manually by setting up macros. And Open Builds does have a tab down here to allow you to set up your own custom macros if you're looking for a feature that's not already integrated into the software. Now, I think I did already show you the console, the 3D view, how you can rotate it, zoom in and out, see the different coordinate plane down here using the measurements. And you can also change it to inch mode right here using this button, and it will change all of those measurements as well. So it doesn't matter if you loaded a file that's in metric or in inches, you can just select 
inch mode or millimeter mode and see your design in whichever one you like, regardless of which one you actually saved it as. And then just like most other software, this serial console is gonna show you and allow you to type in custom commands and change these settings if you wanna do them manually. Now, speaking of these settings and changing them manually, another option is up here under this top tab that says Gerbil settings. You can change your Gerbil settings up here by typing in whichever one you wanna change individually. Now also by hovering over them, you get this expanded definition of what each of these different Gerbil settings actually does, in addition to the shorthand version that's over here. And you would simply just type in your new value here as well and click save. We'll type in another value for this one. And you would click save and it's just gonna push the entire changes that you've made over to your machine. So now we've changed my homing distance pull off from three down to one, and that's now saved in there. Now we did go through the calibration wizards a second ago. You can also calibrate it here by manually typing in your steps per millimeter, if you've already done the math for that manually, or you can go on this calculator and find the nominal measurements for your machine based on your settings. Now mine is a belt driven GT3 with 20 teeth. This is the correct motor type but I'm running a 132nd micro step. And you'll notice the value that it wants to use based on these calculations is 106.667. And my value is slightly off based on my actual calibration, probably because my belts have been used for about a year and a half now, and they're a little bit stretched out. So I'm gonna keep my original calculated value using the wizard, but if you don't wanna go to the wizard and you don't know how to do the math for this, you can use these pre-calculated ones and you can choose lead screw or belt and then you can go through and select what kind of lead screw you're using. Now also within here are these defaults. If you are running a open built machine, they do have some defaults in here already set up for you that you could push to your machine, which are great for setting up an open built machine for the first time before you go through all those calibration processes. Now moving on from the Gerbil tab, we have a troubleshooting tab with all these little indicator lights that will light up if you do trigger a limit switch or when you are testing your probe out. With some more over here in this firmware section to show whether certain things are enabled or not on your machine. Now, some computers might have an issue with the 3D viewer and you might need to disable it if you have a underrated graphics card. So selecting this to disable that 3D view and it takes a second to update. And while it updates, if you guys haven't already, go ahead and make sure you hit the like button on this video. It really helps the channel out. So you notice here, the 3D viewer is gone. And the way to turn it back on will be coming back in here and unchecking this disabled one. And it will bring it right back up. You can also disable the digital readout, which we'll do that real quick as well. And that might help if your computer's having issues with updating it disables these. If you've got low RAM on your computer, sometimes it doesn't update these very quickly and it's delayed. So disabling it could be beneficial for those users. Now I've run into issues with those being enabled while I'm live streaming. So maybe next time I do that, I might have to come through here and disable that if my computer is not keeping up with it. Uh, I did update the RAM since that did happen. So I'm hoping that that is enough to make it not air out next time I do a live stream while carving on the same computer. Now that we've covered the majority of the tabs and the wizards and the buttons up here across the top, and another neat feature in here that I like is the ability to set up a G28 and G30 functions directly using this little button right here instead of having to set them up via macros like you would in other softwares. Now, if you do want to see me set up a G28 for my corner fence, I'll go through that in another video. Check out this video next.